Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about what to do if we have a weak peso versus the dollar or the pound or the Australian dollar or what have you, whatever, whatever uh, currency you may be using or whatever. It's something that we definitely need to be thinking about. Here's my take on this, is that over time, it all modulates out because sometimes you're gonna catch it high, sometimes you're gonna catch it low and it meets more or less in the middle. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a good thing for, for us because it just kind of evens itself out. Now, if the, if the peso gets really, really weak and, you know, it starts falling apart, that's, that's bad for us. You know, if it gets really weak and we're getting like, say, 45 or 40 pesos for the dollar or something like that, that's a concern. It's definitely a concern because what it does is it brings... All the savings and everything that we're getting in the Philippines, it kind of makes it go kaput really, really fast. You know, and it's it's great to see a strong dollar and a strong peso. That's the that's the best way to have it. It's the safest way to have it. It's it's good for everybody. I mean, right now the dollar's weak, the peso's strong. Um, I don't. I'm not sure where we are today. I believe it's up around uh, 50 something, 51 maybe, or 50, somewhere around there. It was up almost to 52 there for a while. Maybe it hit 52. And that's a good place to be. It was at 54, 55 for a while, maybe even higher a long time ago. And you know, that's great for Americans over here when we start seeing that. When we start seeing it go up to like 60 to $1 or something like that, or what have you. That That's great to see that, but it's not good for the Filipinos. That's why I say it's best to have it where both the American dollar and the peso are both strong and it kind of modulates itself out. Is it going to be like that forever? I'm afraid not. Maybe the dollar is going to weaken and you'll see, you know, something happen with that, you know, but you really want it kind of in the middle. That's the place to have it. But if let's say this, this get goes kaput and it goes to, um, 40 to one, let's say, so I got some bug or mosquito on my lip or something. If, let's say it goes 40 to one, um, that's a bad thing. It's good to have some money put aside all the time in the, in the bank, open a peso and open a dollar account. So you can kind of switch in and out if you have that cash. Remember though, if you have anything over $10,000 in accounts over here, you have to kind of fill out the fat cut reporting stuff. You have to fill that out. So you, you, you make, make sure you want to do that, you know, because you have to, it's a, it's a law. I, we just got a, a new bunch of, baby ducks in here as you can see all their feathers are pecked off because once they have one weakness in their feathers they peck all the rest of them off but anyway you know I just want you guys to remember to keep an eye on that because we have to we have to worry more than just about inflation because that can that can make inflation worse for us over here if we start seeing weaknesses in our, in our currency the currency that we use if we see those weaknesses we have to pay attention to those we have to um, really um, pay attention to that we have to pay attention to the, inf the inflation so the inflation the weaknesses and you know that's 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 key to living over here and sometimes that can kill a expat over here that's on the lower budgets I keep pushing that thing about the lower budgets because people keep talking to me about coming over here on less than a thousand dollars it's like don't because god forbid later on something happens and you don't have the money to go home you're in trouble you know you're in trouble and airline tickets are going sky high they're going to the roof rents i'm starting to see are starting to go up a little bit more although they're still very cheap they are going up and you need to find these these little gems that i talk about that you fix up you put your ac in there's still rentals out there i have one right now i believe it's four thousand five hundred it's a steal. I have another one for 5,000. I have another one for 7,000. I got three right now that are all open and ready. You know, they're ready to, to, to move in. And those are the little gems you want to get. One of them actually has AC. I believe the, the other one has an AC hole. You just got to get the AC, um, put it in hot water if you want hot water. It has a dirty kitchen. It's really, really clean and really, really nice. I, I actually like that, that apartment. It's kind of down back. <clears throat> There's a few roosters around the area. I'm not sure how bad it is back there, but you know what? That's the Philippines, so you got to kind of live with that and deal with it. But it's a very clean apartment. It gets breezes. 
uh, you open the door up, the breezes blow right through. The other ones, like I said, it is one, the seven thousand, no, it's 8,000, I take that back, it's 8,000 for that, for the other one. Um, it comes with one AC, it needs hot water and another AC unit, okay? So, you know, these are the things you gotta, you have to think about is higher rents. Rents are gonna go up, you know? Rents are surely gonna go up. And we're starting to see that now. But remember, that conversion rate can make or break some people. Because if you're only on a thousand and it changes 10 or 20%, and it can, it can, and it can change very quickly, almost overnight in some cases, if something happens in a country or it is war or the economy starts falling apart or a stock market crash or whatever, things happen in the world, especially in today's world. And those are the things you gotta be, you know, ready to prepare for. Always have some money in the bank, have it in both currencies. That way there you can kind of go back and forth. When, when one is up, you, you grab out, you know, you can, you, you know what to do. You grab out of one or the other, you know, when, depending on which, which one is up or down. And you know, once you got that all figured out, you're golden. But anyway, guys, I did want to touch on that. Remember, you do have to file for FATCA. It's good to have $5,000 probably in each account. Um, that way there are 4,500 in each account. Um, remember all those things count as one. I believe with FATCA, anything over $10,000, you got to report. So if you have three accounts and they go over 10,000, you got to report it. And that includes your security deposit at the PRA, I believe too, but I'm not sure about that. Um, cause mine's less than 10,000. So I never had to worry about that, but, um, it may be something if you guys have $20,000 accounts, you may want to check on that just to make sure that you don't have to fill out FATCA. Okay. Because you did open up an account and your name is on that account, but it's also under the PRA. So it might not show up with them, but I'm not quite sure. But if they had you fill out paperwork for the IRS and guess what, you're probably going to have to fill it out. But anyway, guys, remember, stay on top of your money. Always, always stay on top of that. Always have some money, even if it's just a few thousand dollars in a, a peso account and have a few thousand dollars in your dollar account and have some money ready, re readily available, of course, for emergencies and stuff like that too, or credit cards or what have you. Remember, some hospitals won't take credit cards. I just want to throw that out there because we have a lot of newbies coming on board. We have talked about that before. But anyway, guys, I want to talk, talk about that. Um, stay on top of it. When you get over here, always watch the conversion rates. That's, that's important. It's part of living outside of the US, no matter whether you live in the Philippines or Thailand or wherever you live, those conversion rates are key. God bless, guys. Take care.